A mysterious mist envelops the town, bringing deadly and unknown creatures from another dimension that traps a group of people in a grocery store. As the group struggles to survive and find a way out, tensions rise and personal demons are revealed. Will they survive the mysterious mist and the dangers it brings? Let's find out in the movie. The story begins with an artist, David Drayton, the main character, hand-painting a poster for an upcoming horror film. Later that night, a massive storm strikes Bridgeton, Maine, where David's house and the whole town lose electricity. Because of the bad weather, David brings his family downstairs to take shelter as the weather might cause accidents. And right after they go to hide, a tree smashes through his studio window, ruining his paintings, including his latest work. The morning after the storm, David and his family go outside to check on their property. David, holding his latest painting, looks at it for the last time before throwing it away with a look of regret in his eyes. And at that moment, his son Billy approaches him and his wife Steph and tells them that he needs to show them something. They then discover that their family boathouse has been crushed by a fallen tree from their neighbor's land in the storm. While staring at the now-ruined boathouse outside their home, the family notices a thick mist approaching from off the nearby lake. Having different guesses of what the approaching mist might be, David just shakes it off and tells his family that it might just be caused by the storm. Afterwards, he tells Steph to get Billy dressed because he'll be taking him to town to buy some groceries and materials to fix their broken window. While Billy is getting dressed up, David goes to the neighbor, Brent Norton, who is a lawyer, to exchange insurance information about the boathouse. Upon arriving at Brent's yard, David notices that Brent's car is also crushed by a tree because of the storm. After exchanging words about the insurance, Brent asks David for a ride to the town, to which David says yes. Afterwards, David, Billy, and Brent drive to town by his SUV for the grocery store, while David's wife, Steph, remains behind at the house. While driving to the grocery store, they see several electric company trucks heading in the other direction, and oddly, several dozen military vehicles are heading to the military base. Upon arriving at the grocery store, David takes out his phone to contact Steph, but it has no signal. He also tries to call her using the payphone, but finds out it is no good either. Returning to the grocery store, David finds the store packed with people stocking up on supplies. There, he sees Sally, who works as a store clerk, and asks why they aren't using the generators to power up the whole grocery store, to which she replies that they only use it to keep some products cool and not spoil. After a while, when David is talking with his son and some locals, he sees three military men entering the store that are seen to be easygoing. A military policeman then arrives right after. He approaches the soldiers and orders them to return to base after 30 minutes of shopping and just leaves after telling the soldiers what to do. Sometime later, David hears a loud siren outside which alarms all the people in the store making them all turn their attention to the parking lot. Outside, they see a local townsperson named Jeff Miller running towards the grocery store, bloodied and frantically screaming for help. Upon entering the store, the man immediately begins screaming about something unknown, hidden in the mist that is attacking and killing people. Looking outside, people can't see any creature and find that the mist has now surrounded the grocery store. Nothing can be seen but white smoke. Being shocked by what is happening, several people flee the store immediately. Unfortunately, screams are heard shortly after coming from outside in the direction where the people run towards. As people still worry about the mist spreading outside, an earthquake suddenly happens which causes some people to panic and stress even more. A store manager then tells everyone to seal the doorway and to remain inside calmly. However, there is a lady who worries about her two young children who are left home alone. In that case, she wants to go home to check on them and ask somebody to accompany her on the way. Being scared of the dangers the mist may bring, everyone just stares at her 
but no one wants to accompany her, so she leaves the grocery store alone. After some time calming down and contemplating what is happening, David sits down to rest along with his son and some locals that are also stuck with them in the grocery store. This time, a supervisor named Ollie Weeks checks up on them and says that David should get some blankets in the back room. So David gets up and goes to the back room of the grocery store on his own. While checking on the blankets, he notices that the generator is fuming and almost overheating. Checking near the generator, he hears something outside the large loading dock door of the grocery store. Moving closer to the loading dock door, he is startled to find that it is a terrifying creature which starts pressing heavily into the door so he quickly runs back into the main store. Upon arriving, he tells others what he heard through the door, but they don't believe him. David also tells them that the generator is smoking and might only work for a little while if not fixed. After convincing other men, the five of them go back to the loading dock to check the sound and fix the generator. After inspecting the generator, they come to a conclusion that the generator's exhaust system is clogged outside and someone must remove what is stuck in it. A young bag boy, Norm, volunteers to go outside. Hearing this, David warns him not to go outside, but Norm and the other men ignore his warnings and keep insisting on opening the large loading dock garage door. While opening the door, the mist becomes incredibly thick and slowly seeps through the loading dock into the back room. The men then make fun of David for being a scaredy cat, but before anyone can react, a giant tentacle appears and snags Norm's leg, trying to pull him out under the door. Norm grabs the door, trying to stop the unknown creature from pulling him completely. David then tries to pull him back while asking for help from the other men, but they are too scared to move. Unfortunately, several more tentacles appear and begin ripping flesh from Norm's body. Wanting to save Norm, Ollie breaks the emergency glass to grab an axe inside it. He tries to chop off the tentacle, holding Norm, but misses and almost hits his head. Unfortunately, the creature pulls the bloodied and terrified Norm into the mist, but before all the tentacles escape, David quickly grabs the axe on the floor and manages to chop off one of the tentacles. After the horrifying events, they close the loading dock doorway, still not knowing what exactly is behind the mist. While all of them are shocked, Jim approaches David and tries to apologize for making fun of him. David, being angered of what happened, punches him and shouts that he gets a teenager killed for not believing him. When the fight is over and all have calmed down, they go back into the grocery store to tell Brent what they've discovered and ask him if he has any idea about what to do. However, Brent lashes out at them because he believes they are playing a joke on him by saying that monsters are dwelling in the mist. The argument causes a commotion, and even the store manager says everything is lunacy. David and the men insist on showing several others, including the manager, the piece of tentacle that he severed from the monster. Seeing with his own eyes, now the manager finally believes them and tells this bad news to others in the store. However, Brent says that it proves nothing and that the mist is nothing more than part of a storm. He then organizes a group of people to leave the store to drive away and find help. At this time, a religious lady, Miss Carmody, stands and mocks Brent's group, who is leaving, and David's group, who is barricading the door. Miss Carmody continues to say that they should make a human sacrifice to the monster to save all of them, which makes the kids in the store scared and causes a lady to slap her for preaching. After some time, when Brent and his group are about to leave the store, some people try to convince them to stay but fail. Upon hearing that Brent's group is leaving, a man volunteers to retrieve a shotgun from another man's car. David asks the man to tie a 300-foot rope around his waist so that the people in the store will know the safe distance. Brent and his group leave first. The man with the rope leaves right behind them. After a minute of silence, the rope pulls rapidly out of the store. David and several others try to hold it back, but it just runs too fast. Finally, the rope stops and David and others pull back the rope. Eventually, the rope comes back into the store red, covered in fresh dripping blood, and the lower, severed half of the man's body is still attached to the rope's end. Seeing this, everyone in the store begins crying and screaming. 
The remaining people assume that Brent and his group have also died, and they realize the only way to survive is to continue barricading everything in front of the storefront. Since the moment that Brent and his group are gone, the people in the store have been split into two groups. One group follows David and believes they must barricade the doorway and survive until help comes. The second group, however, listens to Miss Carmody, who believes God has sent down his plagues and wrath upon their town in the world for their sins. She cries out that she's a righteous follower of God and that anyone who wants to be saved should listen to her words and scripture. David and his men believe that this is not a biblical problem and can be solved rationally. Both groups don't have a chance to argue that night, though, as giant two-foot-long insects begin landing on the windows of the store's front. Though the insects don't seem to be the problem, some giant six-feet pterodactyl-like predator birds hunting the insects are now crashing into the windows. The windows crack further when a bird crashes into an insect resting on a window. Eventually, a bird shatters a window, allowing several insects to fly through the window. Upon entering, the insects immediately attack and kill a young girl who is a worker at the grocery store. When other people are using shovels, rakes, and sticks to beat and kill the insects, another two large bird creatures enter the store. The first bird kills a man immediately upon entering the store and is, in turn, killed by being set on fire. The other bird is shot by Ollie, who wields a six-shooter pistol. The fire used to kill the bird eventually burns a man severely. He is burned so badly that he says the pain is unbearable and begs to be killed to end his suffering. David and those near the burn victim tell him to hang on for a little longer. After discussing what to do, David and his group go outside to visit a nearby shopping plaza pharmacy to retrieve burn medicine, antibiotics, and painkillers. On their way back to the grocery store, they encounter the military policeman that appeared before. The MP has been strung up in a spider's web and has large pulsing sores covering his body. Coughing and stuttering, he says that everything is their fault and that the military is responsible for this disaster. The sores on his body then open to reveal live spiders growing inside of them. Seeing this, David and his group quickly retreat to the grocery store. While retreating, they lose two people to the spiders. David and his group make it back to the store and ask the soldier who went to the pharmacy with them what the military policeman meant by it being the military's fault. The soldier says his two other partners in the store can explain it better, but the group later discovers that the two other soldiers have committed suicide by hanging themselves in the loading docks. The remaining soldier says that all he knows is that the scientists have found a way to open doorways to other worlds and dimensions, and they call it Project Arrowhead. He also adds that the Project Arrowhead went out of control, allowing different creatures to escape. Hearing this, Mrs. Carmody says that the doorway is hell and that now they are paying for the soldier's mistakes. She demands that the remaining soldier be sacrificed for his sins for bringing these monsters here. The soldier replies that he is just a lowly soldier and the scientists are the ones who did all the experiments. Miss Carmody exclaims that they have tampered with God's power and those responsible must suffer. Hearing this, one of the men who has sided with her stabs the soldier three times in the stomach. To David and his group's horror, the soldier is tossed through the front door outside the grocery store. Bleeding and alive, he begs to be let back inside, but a gigantic monster grabs the soldier and kills him. After the monster leaves, Miss Carmody says that the monsters have been appeased tonight, but more people must be offered up eventually. Her biblical ramblings become more fervent and frequent, and she even starts talking commandingly about a human sacrifice. Almost running out of patience, David assembles several people to accompany him because he intends to break out of the store and see if he can drive through the mist and find a safe place. David, his son Ollie, and six others agree that they will leave after stockpiling food and supplies in a couple of nights. However, at the night of the departure, Miss Carmody catches them before they can leave and assembles everyone else in the store to prevent them from leaving. David tells her to move, but she counters by saying that not only can David not leave the store, but that David's son Billy must be the next human sacrifice. David and Ollie are approached by several men armed with knives. At first, they just argue, but then a fight breaks out. The fight continues until it is stopped by a gunshot 
It is Ollie who doesn't hesitate and opens fire on Miss Carmody with his pistol. He shoots her in the stomach, stunning her followers, and then executes her with a bullet to the forehead, completely horrifying all of them. Ollie then points the gun at the knife-wielding men, causing them to retreat, and motions for David and the group to make a break for it. On their way out, a furious woman, who is a very ardent follower and has a very close friendship with Mrs. Carmody, screams at Ollie, calling him a murderer. David and the group get outside the grocery store and run for David's SUV. On the way to the car, two of them are killed by spiders, and one runs back to the store and is welcomed inside. Ollie reaches the SUV first, but is killed by the giant creature that has killed the soldier before. David, his son, a woman, the man who initially warned about the creatures in the mist, and an older woman eventually make it into the SUV. Before driving away, David sees the gun that Ollie dropped and grabs it off the hood of his car right before a giant spider leaps on the hood of the vehicle. Luckily, the giant spider just stares at them for a second, climbs across the car, and leaves them unharmed. David then starts the car and drives in the front of the store while the survivors inside watch them drive by. On the ride, they first stop at David's house where he sees his wife's dead body in a spider web. Upon realizing what just happened, David whimpers and slowly accepts that he can't do anything about his wife's death. They leave and continue on the main roads where they see tons of cars that are overturned, a school bus full of webbed children, and tons of debris and roadside damage. While driving, they also encounter the most enormous creature in the film, a massive six-legged monster covered with tentacles that is the size of several large buildings. Eventually, the SUV runs out of gas, but they still cannot drive out of the mist into safety. With Billy asleep, David pulls out the gun and nods in silent agreement with the others to merciful killing that will end their suffering. However, there are only four bullets, not enough to kill all of them. So David decides to stay alive and let the creatures kill him. Four gunshots are heard and four flashes of light are emitted from the car. After that, David exits the car screaming for the monsters to come get him. He has shot and killed his eight-year-old son and the three other survivors and is now waiting for his death. A large rumbling noise is heard outside, indicating something is approaching David. Though David is screaming at the top of his lungs and begging to die, a monster does not reveal itself in the mist. Instead, it is a U.S. military tank that is followed by an entire military battalion. Tanks, soldiers with flamethrowers and rifles, and truckloads of survivors are now traveling on the road. Some survivors are from the grocery store, and one of them is the woman who left the store by herself at the very beginning. She is entirely unscathed and has her two children with her. David realizes that he has just murdered his son and three innocent people only moments before they would have been rescued. The movie ends when David collapses and continues to scream. Two soldiers approach him to help him, not aware of what David has just done. Overall, The Mist is an atmospheric and suspenseful horror film that explores themes of survival, faith, and the dangers of groupthink. Its compelling characters and tense plot distinguish it in the genre, and its shocking ending leaves a lasting impression on audiences.